Hi. Um, it's great to meet you through this uh, video program. Who does not like celebration? Who does not like good food, good clothes? Who doesn't like, um, you know, having fun with family and friends and being out at a mall? Who doesn't like enjoying life? Um, and Christmas is a season that everybody is uh, in some kind of celebration. Everybody is looking for uh, some kind of uh, time out and time together with people and uh, good times together. Yes, it's good to have good fun and time out and eat well. That's great. But is that all that uh, Jesus was born for? Is that all is a reason for the season? Is that all that we ought to be receiving? Or is there something that we ought to be giving? Is there something that uh, is required of us? Much more than just to have fun and to probably just go to church, worship, sing some songs and listen to a good sermon and come back. Is that all this whole season and Christmas is all about? Watch this to learn more. Let's go on to God's word uh, quickly. Shall we turn in our Bibles to Hebrews and chapter number 2. Hebrews chapter 2 and let's read verses 9 through 11. Hebrews chapter 2 verses 9 to 11. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. In bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God for whom and through whom everything exists should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. Both the one who makes men holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. We see Jesus here talking about Jesus made a little lower than the angels but now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death and that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone and in bringing many sons to glory it was fitting that God for whom and through whom everything exists should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering both the one who makes men holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. To title this morning's message, I would call it Incarnational Transformation. Incarnational Transformation. We are just a day before Christmas, what the world calls at Christmas. The Bible does not call 25th day of December as Christmas. And neither did Jesus want any of his followers or his disciples to celebrate his birth. In fact, for the first 300 years after Jesus was born and lived and died and rose again and ascended back into heaven, there was no idea of Christmas at all. None of the apostles who wrote um, the New Testament None of the elders of the churches um, ever celebrated the birth of Jesus. Jesus only instituted the last supper to be observed and said, do this in remembrance of me. And so we find this form of celebration of uh, Christmas, like the way we uh, see it in the world today, is only about 200 years old. Uh, which comes from a European uh, a form of uh, evangelical uh, evangelicalism. Now, talking about Christmas, it's uh, first of all we do not have any clue if Jesus was actually born on the twenty fifth day of December, and it is quite unlikely that Jesus was born in December itself. One of the reasons is that. The scripture records that when the angels came announcing the birth of Christ, the shepherds were keeping watch over their flocks by night. And um, it's quite possible that probably it was a little more warmer season while the shepherds were out in the open. And this the season would be uh, quite unlikely because it probably was very cold around this season. 
anyway forget the dispute or the debate about when he was born but the truth remains that he was born <laughs> that cannot be refuted or challenged because um the scriptures talk about his birth history itself and time is divided with his birth as bc and ad and historically also historians record of a person called jesus and so there are many many ways you find an evidence of jesus you have a uh, specific places of where he lived the miracles the locations of the miracles uh the place where he was crucified the place where he was buried many many um archaeological evidences are too compelling to prove the fact of the existence of jesus and so nobody is here wondering about whether jesus was ever born or not that truth is settled already globally amen and uh, but why was he born that is what we are talking about here this morning he uh, took upon himself humanity which is called as incarnation the divine being becoming a human being putting on himself humanity is incarnation and the reason why he came into such uh took upon himself such an incarnation was to bring about a transformation amen and you and i are here as transformed the people of god this morning because of the incarnation of jesus you find here in verse 9 but we see jesus who was made a little lower than the angels talking about his humanity but now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death and so that by the grace of god he might taste death for everyone it goes on to also talk about he putting upon himself humanity in verse 11 where the one who makes men holy and those who are made holy the one who makes us holy is jesus and the ones who are made holy we who are made holy we are all of the same family well to everyone who believed in his name he gave them the right to become the children of god we read that in john's gospel chapter 1 and so the fact that we have this relationship with god that we can call him abba father the fact that he looks at us as his children are a result of his incarnation when sin kept all of us outside the camp when the people of israel came to worship god in the temple or even before the temple was built in the tabernacle the priests would go and offer the sacrifice and those who would worship would stand outside but now because jesus came and he died on the cross and rose again and when he died when that veil in the temple was torn from top to bottom everyone has access into the holy of holies everyone has access to call him abba father and jesus himself said everyone who calls upon me will be saved those who have looked to jesus those who have believed in jesus have believed in the father those who have seen jesus have seen the father and those who have believed in him have eternal life and so we have now uh, because of jesus incarnation we who are destined to die and go to hell we who are destined to eternal condemnation we who are destined to stand outside the camp outside the tabernacle outside the temple outside in the in the outer courts we have now been given the access we have now been given the freedom to come to him but it was his initiative he is the one who came looking for us he is the one who came searching for us he is the one who transformed himself into uh, putting on himself on himself a human uh, uh, putting on himself humanity and by that he was able to bring transformation into us we see very clearly that in the process of his incarnation the first thing we find here is that jesus is a very relational being he is not an impersonal being is not just some kind of a power or some superpower or some shakti 
or some kind of a philosophy or some kind of a cloudy imagination he is not some kind of a philosophy or a concept he is not some kind of an abstract uh, idea but he is a very relational being a person with a personality and the scripture says that when god made adam and eve that he made a made us human beings adam and eve in his own image and so here we are as a reflection of who god looks like we are we have been created in the image of god and we are his sons and daughters which means we carry his personality so god is a person who has a personality and we talk uh, about many of god's attributes and nature his characteristics and we find that all of that are also found in us most of them except for the aspects of the divinity talking about god is love god has given to us the capacity to love because we have been created in his image his quality of love is in us don't we have the capacity to love but where did we get that that came from god we find in scripture where when people sinned and went against him or displeased or disobeyed him he was angry with them don't we have that nature of anger some of us probably have an excess dosage of that and look at many other attributes of uh, the ideas of justice and righteousness that we find in us in our conscience when somebody does wrong we know that's wrong how do we know how to differentiate between what is right and wrong what is good and evil where we, where did we get that from from god and so you have all of those attributes um deposited in us imputed in us into us as human beings and he put upon himself flesh and blood humanity and came to relate with us as god who is a personal being who is a relational being in his process of incarnation became relational let me show you another verse or a few verses that will help us understand this even more better turn with me in your bibles to 1 john just turn down a few pages after hebrews and you will find 1 john in chapter number 1 and verses 1 to 7 that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked at and our hands have touched this we proclaim concerning the word of life the life appeared we have seen it and testified to it and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the father and has appeared to us this life that was with the father has now appeared to us verse 3 we proclaim to you that we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ we write this to make our joy complete this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you god is light in him there is no darkness at all if we claim to have fellowship with him yet walk in the darkness we lie and do not live by the truth but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of jesus his son purifies us from all sin here we see from the beginning what we have heard what we have seen with our eyes which we have looked at and our hands have touched what was unseen before now we are able to see and our hands have touched and we have felt him and this is the word of life we proclaim to you john writes and now we have fellowship with the father and with the son because life has appeared to us you see this is the aspect of the incarnation which is very relational where we could see where we could hear and where we could touch although we have not seen we have not felt and touched jesus physically we have not seen him with our naked eyes 
but he has given to us a revelation in our spirit deep in our hearts where we know Jesus is Lord where we know that he is the son of God we know that he is the savior of the world we are able to experience his presence last week we talked about coming from darkness to light for those of us i talked about how if we have been in gross darkness in sin in idolatry under the oppression of the devil and we've come to the light we know what it is you know it in reality that this is real is not just a myth it's not just a concept it's not fiction but when you experience him personally when you relate with him personally when you reach out and receive his love and believe in him and receive him into your heart he comes into your life you begin to have relationship a relationship a fellowship with him hallelujah this is the process of his incarnation and the process of his incarnation is relational and by he coming and putting on humanity and by he coming and reaching out to us and coming down to our level what has happened is that we have fellowship with him hallelujah we who were once enemies of god have now become friends of god amen jesus says to his disciples i don't call you any more as servants but i call you as friends hallelujah don't we sing that song i am a friend of god amen hallelujah you and i have this relationship with him and this relationship is a very special relationship because this is god almighty god of the universe god of all creation who created everything for himself and everything was created through him as we read in hebrews 2:10 has now come down to become our friends isn't that amazing and that relationship is what is life transforming that transforms our life everyone who has come into a relationship with the lord jesus will certainly be able to testify like john testifies here that our lives have been transformed because of he putting on humanity and coming as a relational being and coming and dying on the cross for us and taking our place what has happened is that his blood has now purified us it has cleansed us it has sanctified us it has made us holy the same idea which the writer of hebrews wrote in hebrews 2 and verses 10 and 11 is the same thing you find john also mentioning in verse number 3 we proclaim to you that we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ now it is not just that we can experience his life transforming this life transforming relationship where we have a fellowship with him but by the fellowship that you and i have with him as you and i have received him into our lives we also are able to open the way for others to have fellowship with him because of our fellowship with the lord jesus hallelujah because you have a relationship with him you are able to call others into a relationship with him read with me in second corinthians in chapter number 5 verse number 17 onwards therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation the old is gone and the new has come you see the transformation there when you come into a relationship with christ if anyone is in christ if christ dwells in our lives if we have invited him to be the lord and master and the savior of our lives the old has gone the new has come transformation has happened all this is from god verse 18 who reconciled us to himself through christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation relationship has happened through reconciliation 
why there was a need for reconciliation because sin broke the relationship that god had with us sin came between us and him and when we gave our lives to jesus and asked him to forgive our sins he forgave our sins and the barrier of sin between us and him was taken away and because of that that was a process of reconciliation what has happened is we have been reconciled and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation that god was reconciling the world to himself in christ not counting men's sins against them and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation now how is the rest of the world going to be reconciled with god how are their sins going to be forgiven how are they going to come into a fellowship into a relationship with god it is through us hallelujah that message of reconciliation has been given to us now what jesus did is the same thing we also ought to do we saw how the transformation that he brought about into the world was through incarnation and so it is necessary for us also to take the same model and go through a process of incarnation to bring transformation into others lives in other words we need to be connecting with people and come into a relationship with people just as he did what he needed to do to come into a relationship with people so that they will see they will touch they will hear him and believe in him we need to do everything that it takes for people to believe in him but we need to build bridges with people not burn the bridges not break the bridges but build bridges we need to connect with people we need to cross over from this side to the other side i spoke a series of messages on that on the aspect of crossing over if you go on to our website and click on videos and go to the youtube channel you will find a series of messages recently a few months back called crossover it's necessary that we go on the other side and help people to come to christ that is what jesus did he didn't sit in heaven and say let all people be saved but he came down from heaven to earth he uh, left his glory and honor and came down and where he didn't even find a place to be born in this earth that he created he was laid in a manger there was no room for him in the inn and so we ought to go through this process of incarnation we need to see how can we build bridges we can we need to see how can we relate with people how can we you know make it helpful and easy for people to believe in jesus what must we do how can we make a difference in people's lives and how can we build relationships with people around us so that we can bring a transformation into their lives we can do this ministry of reconciliation we have been entrusted with the message of reconciliation but we need to do this ministry of reconciliation it is not just for some special called out ones to do it not just for some evangelists or for preachers or for some pastors to do some ministry but everyone who is who is in christ who has experienced this transformation has been entrusted with this gift with this call with this message of reconciliation to bring forth reconciliation and you and i have the power the capacity to do that let me read for you another verse from romans chapter 1 shall we turn our bibles to romans chapter 1 in verse number 16 i am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of god for the salvation of everyone who believes first for the jew gen- then for the gentile I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is a, because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes first for the Jew then for the Gentile Do you see needy people around you Some have financial needs Not everybody has financial needs Some have health needs 
some have emotional needs some are struggling with broken families relational problems some are lost with no one to guide them no buddy to get, direct them some are struggling with bad habits some are struggling with addictions some are struggling with making it in life struggling to be successful either in business or in education or some area of life don't we see people struggling people in need people looking for answers people struggling people with questions if we just relate with people if we just connect with people who are in need we can bring this message of reconciliation and by default everyone who has not accepted christ everyone who has not experienced reconciliation with jesus is a person in need amen that's by default and you and i have this message of reconciliation you and i have this message of hope you and i have this possibility of reincarnating ourselves in the way that is necessary in a way that people can relate for somebody who can only eat on a banana leaf using fingers you give them a spoon and a fork and all the cutlery they will simply not know how to eat it even though the same food is placed in this very beautiful you know artistic looking cutlery set but if you serve the same food on a banana leaf it will work are you hearing me this morning amen and so if we are able to do that that's the process of incarnation we need to figure out what would connect with whom if we just build those bridges we will be able to reincarnate ourselves in the way that is relevant to people and build those relationships and it's only a matter of time before you see somebody accept the lord jesus in their lives hallelujah amen it's possible it's possible and that's the call that god has given to us we who are celebrating the incarnation of christ we who are celebrating with new clothes and good food and with all of our you know celebration times and getting together with families and all of those things we who are celebrating jesus in incarnation the call to us this morning is for us to do the same for christ to be born in many hearts and lives hallelujah amen praise the lord and so where you have to be in a dhoti or a kurta if you have a three piece suit and a hat and a boot that won't work you get what i'm saying amen hallelujah and so where you need to probably be giving laddu huh laddu and murk you give pastries and pizzas that won't work we need to be translating what we have into what people can chew amen if you make it chewable if you make it palatable it will sell it will be bought people will receive it gladly people will receive christ people will receive your love amen jesus became a relational being let's quickly move on the process of incarnation had the relational aspect to it which was primary and so because of that we were able to come into fellowship with him and the ultimate purpose is to bring people into fellowship with jesus and so while we have fellowship with jesus 
we also relate with people and and take this incarnational model of relating with people what will happen we will also be able to help people have fellowship with jesus quickly number 2 come back to hebrews chapter 2 we talked about the relational aspect and verses 9 to 11 but we see jesus who may who was made a little lower than the angels now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of god he might taste death for every one in bringing many sons to glory it was fitting that god for whom and through whom everything exists should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering god found it fitting to allow his son to go through suffering he said it was fitting that that's the key whatever is fitting whatever it takes whatever it demands whatever has to be done has to be done and that leads us to the second point which is the aspect of sacrificial love firstly it is relational love and se- secondly it is a sacrificial love whatever it was was fitting to get the job done what has to be done to redeem mankind is not just the bull blood of bulls and goats that can set people free that only covers sin that only reminds it's an annual reminder for people that they are sinners the commands and the laws that were given by the lord was only helping people to see the sinfulness of sin but it did not redeem them it did not deliver them from sin it did not give them eternal life but it's only the grace of god that gave them eternal life it is the grace of god that brought forgiveness of sins but for that grace to be manifested he had to come because without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins why the shedding of blood because there's life in the blood You see in verse 22 of chapter 9 Hebrews 9 and verse 22 In fact the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood and without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness Hebrews 9:22 Why did Jesus have to die why the shedding of blood because without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins why blood because there's life in the blood and for all our sins we were destined to die eternally be condemned and incur the wrath of god and experience damnation in hell and to die the second death there's a physical death that every one of us die but the second death the eternal death we were destined for that but because jesus wanted to rescue us from the eternal death and so he comes down he come down from heaven above he comes down to our level and he sacrifices himself and gave his life so that our life can be redeemed he paid the price he paid the penalty for every convict who is convicted in a court of law for a crime he has done justice is carried out by a verdict that is pronounced and the judge pronounces a suitable verdict for the uh, the crime that he has committed and then justice is done god of justice did justice by paying the penalty himself we were given a standing order in the college i studied that none of us should speak any other language than english now this is a bible college and we had students from all over south asia from all across india and other nations around as well and so each one was more comfortable in his own mother tongue and so when we got out of class anywhere in the dining area in the hostel room or anywhere library chapel and so when a tamilian saw a tamilian he would speak in tamil tihari uh, or a, a telugu person saw a, another telugu person he would speak in telugu a malayali saw a malayali he would speak in malayalam and what was happening is was each group was getting together and and they were not mixing with each other and so to break that 
they said there's a uh, rule that you should not speak in any other language on campus only in english even if you're speaking to another person who's from your own who speaks your own mother tongue and mind you even the walls have ears in that college and so if anyone is found speaking any other language and remember this is about uh, 15 17 years back so if anyone is found uh, speaking in a vernacular tongue they would be fined 100 rupees immediately okay because they kept saying it and nobody was following it and so they had to really enforce it so they said if you don't speak your mother tongue uh, if you if you speak your mother tongue you would um pay a fine of 100 rupees and in those days 100 rupees was like 5000 rupees or 10000 rupees of today's value for and at a student age 100 is a big money and so what we uh, what what happened was sometimes there are some students you know uh, subconsciously would blurt out speaking their own um, language or assume that no faculty are around so let's speak um take it easy but sometimes um like the spirit who is hovering over the waters before creation a faculty would hover around the hostel rooms <laughs> and nobody would notice him he would come like a shadow and um and then uh, you would find a knock at the door then you open for your pleasant surprise you will find a faculty smiling ear to ear and saying good evening brothers <laughs> and then everybody would go shocked like the disciples when they saw jesus after he rose from the dead and appeared in the room they thought he was a ghost <laughs> and what happened what would happen is with uh, the greatest level of graciousness the faculty would say brothers we would like you to pay a fine of 100 rupees each you know there would be no force there would be no harsh words but with great grace he would welcome them to pay 100 rupees and that would be the most painful thing because we would have planned that that's a weekend probably we would go out and have some good food outside on saturday or sunday and so you're going to lose this and sometimes there might be some students who may not have any money at all they come on full scholarship they come from some rural areas and sometimes have very very less money and they may not even have a hundred on there uh, on hand and so sometimes they would open their wallets and show sir i'm sorry i don't have anything to pay and i have sometimes seen that the faculty themselves would give a hundred from their pocket and say you take this go pay it in the office and come show me the receipt wow that's a very very difficult thing because that puts you into a lot of embarrassment and shame that's exactly what jesus did amen he paid for us i have seen some some of them do that and the guys who got paid by the faculty would never again ever speak in a vernacular language at all the guys who paid themselves who had the money would keep paying it and take it easy but for the ones whom the faculty paid it would pinch them so much that bring such conviction that they would become so conscious to never again do that ever in their lives that's sacrifice that's what jesus did hallelujah true sacrificial love in many in bringing many sons to glory verse 10 it was fitting that god for whom and through whom everything exists should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering he would allow suffering to come upon his son and he paid the price and because jesus paid the price you and i have been set free we have the hope of eternal life he has brought us into glory both the one who makes men holy and those who are made holy are of the same family so jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers 
but how did he make us holy he took upon himself death the most cruel punishment that anybody can go through and scripture itself says cursed is anyone who is hung on a tree it was considered a curse it was a capital punishment it was for the worst of criminals it was reserved for them even today in most of our civilized world democratic countries isn't that the same it's only in the rarest of rare cases that the death penalty is handed out but jesus took that for no sin of his sacrificed himself suffered for us to free us from the power of death hallelujah and so even if someone dies in this world we know that death is not the end of their life death is not the end of their of the chapter the chapter is not closed but it's the beginning of a new chapter hallelujah it's a beginning of the it's stepping into an eternal glory it's stepping into a life where they see jesus face to face no longer as in a mirror but face to face but for which he had to go through this cruel punishment of sacrifice nothing happens without sacrifice if you want god to use you you need to be relationally incarnating yourself if you want god to use you if you want to see transformation come into the lives of many other people you need to be willing to sacrifice yourself you need to be like jesus willing to give up anything see whatever is fitting he thought it was fitting it was fitting for god to hand over jesus to be sacrificed verse 14 to 16 also see the children since the children have flesh and blood he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death that is the devil and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death death fear of death is the most haunting thing is the one thing that comes to grip anybody anywhere across cultures the educated or uneducated the rich or the poor even the most rich and the famous face it but for the one who has been delivered from the fear of death say i'm going to go into glory hallelujah we had two stories of that very recently one was sister jemima's mother and how she told that she will the lord is calling her she will pass on another person was some of you probably uh, ladies know sister padmini alfred sorry padmini uh, davis padmini davis her mother in law 92 years old 3 days back she said she would go on to glory the lord is calling her what a glorious way she said my time has come amen hallelujah no fear no terror amen this is amima's mother said don't cry you know i'm going to go she gave her the encouragement and went although naturally in the flesh there is pain there is grief there is great sorrow beyond consolation but there is a consolation there is a comfort that we receive because of the hope that we have because that power of death has been broken and because we are no more held under the slavery to the fear of death hallelujah these are things of god who have walked with god all through their lives who fellowship with god who have served the lord who have lived for the lord who have glorified god who worshiped god who were in a relationship with god who offered themselves sacrificially to serve the lord and so they are no longer held under the slavery of death of the fear of death god will take it away god takes it away hallelujah you see it's amazing as how at at that age they can come out with such clarity with such fearlessness how is it possible it's 
it's nearly impossible when you think of how somebody at that point can talk like that jesus himself while he was dying he said father into your hands i come in my spirit hallelujah he went through suffering he went through suffering to he paid the penalty that suffering that sacrifice now god is not calling us to sacrifice ourselves on the cross of calvary he has already taken our place we don't have to die again we don't have to go through physical suffering like him for our salvation he has done that and we can't die for us and be saved we can't save ourselves but the point is if we need to see the world around us if we need to see a transformation around our lives around the people in the lives of the people around us we need to be willing to sacrifice be ready to do whatever is fitting to do which involves sacrifice which involves suffering there's a path of suffering that we also go through we are persecuted because we stand for christ paul says we are treated like the scum of the earth we are treated like fools for christ amen we go through suffering probably because you accepted the lord jesus and because you serve jesus and because you share the gospel probably you are not accepted in your own home probably you are not accepted in your own family it's probably in your larger family maybe you are not welcomed and accepted among your peers or your colleagues because you speak the truth because you stand up for the truth because you live by the truth because you serve god because you share the gospel probably pe- people hate you and jesus himself said men will hate you because of me if they hated me they will hate you also if you are my disciples hallelujah amen and so don't try too hard to earn everybody's goodwill don't try too hard to somehow make everyone like you amen there's a path of suffering that we go through if we have to bring transformation in the lives of people we need to go through a path of sacrifice where we're willing to suffer like jesus suffered he did all the good he healed the sick he raised the dead he he cast out demons he fed the 5000 but what did he get at the end of the day everybody left him and ran away nobody stood with him nobody came for his support nobody spoke up for him even his own disciples ran away amen there's a path of suffering that we may go through but that is worth it because it is fitting to do that because you can bring transformation in people's lives be willing to pay the price there's a death that jesus died but there is a co death that you and i are called to which is the process of becoming a disciple of jesus unless you hate your father mother brother sister you cannot be my disciple unless you carry your cross and follow me you cannot be my disciple there is a cross that you and i are called to carry not the cross of jesus some people are replaying that on good friday is eve and carrying a cross and getting beaten and bruised and they some of them even crucify themselves in some nations we don't have to do that but there is a cross that you and i a path of suffering that we care we we go through that brings glory to god that wins the lost hallelujah and the path of suffering you are comforted and by the comfort that you have received you will be able to comfort others second corinthians in chapter number 1 verses 3 to 7 second corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 to 7 praise be to the god and the father of our lord jesus christ the father of compassion and the god of all comfort who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from god for just as the sufferings of christ overflow into our lives so also through christ our comfort overflows hallelujah maybe you have the question why all these problems for me we've been good we've done good have been a good person 
I wished good for everybody. But why these problems for me? God allows his sufferings overflow into our lives so that we are comforted in those times of sufferings and that enables us to also comfort others who are suffering. If we are distressed, verse 6, it is for your comfort and salvation. It is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our suffering, so also you share in our comfort. Hallelujah. The sufferings that you and I go through in this world helps us to comfort others, helps us to strengthen others, helps us to build others, helps us to bring others into his kingdom. Hallelujah. Helps us to bring hope into the lives of the suffering because of the sufferings we endure. And quickly, in this sacrifice, aspect of sacrifice, look at what other things Jesus sacrificed. Come with me to Matthew's gospel, chapter number 20. Of course, he went through suffering, physical pain, agony. And also, in the path of suffering, look at the way he suffered, he sacrificed. This was another aspect of suffer sacrifice. One is the aspect of suffering. Secondly, the aspect of serving. Sacrificial serving. One was sacrificial suffering. Second is sacrificial serving. In Matthew's gospel chapter 20 and verses 26 to 28, when the mother of the sons of Zebedee wanted both of them to sit one at the right and one at the left of Jesus on the throne, in heaven, in the kingdom of heaven, verse 26 to 28, this is what Jesus responds. In fact, we should read from verse 25. Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The heart of servanthood. A life of suffering. A heart of servanthood. Be willing to serve. Be willing to do the menial stuff. Be willing to do anything and everything. Having a heart of serve, serving. Not to have others serve us. What can I give? What can I bring to the table? What can I share? What can I do to you? How can I make your life easy? How can I be helpful to you? How can I serve? Sacrificially. Not just when, I'm, when it's convenient for me. Not when I just have some time. Okay, let's see if I can do something for just to help you. Not when it's easy, but when it's difficult for you. When it causes pain to you. When it causes hardship to you. When it causes inconvenience to you. When it's in an untimely time. Be willing to serve. Not to laud it, but to serve. Hallelujah. Amen. That is sacrificial service. That is what Jesus did when Jesus was born, when Jesus took upon himself incarnation to bring transformation in the lives of people. He not only related with people, he was not just a relational God who came down to our level and related with us and built bridges, but also was sacrificial died, came to die, born to die. And in this Christmas season, would you be willing to sacrificially suffer, sacrificially serve? Hallelujah. So if you're going out tomorrow morning to give out DVDs and serve the community, bring Jesus to the community, are we going to say, I'm going to be relaxing? Oh, you know, I need some rest. I'm going to wake up early morning, 5.30. I need to get back after the service and get back to my bed. My sweet, cushioned, comfortable, warm, cozy bed. Do you love your bed more or do you love Jesus? Amen. Thirdly, 
sacrificial love is selfless selfless philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 8 philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 8 we as the church of jesus need to become like jesus if we become like jesus we will do what jesus did we will have the impact that jesus had we will be effective like the way jesus was Philippians chapter 2 verses verses 1 to 8 if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ if any comfort from his love if any fellowship with the spirit if any tenderness and compassion then make my joy complete by being like minded having the same love being one in spirit and purpose do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit but in humility consider others better than yourselves Each of you should look not only to your own interests but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus who being in the very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped but made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant being found in made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to death even death on a cross. what apostle paul is driving here at writing to the church at philippi is that there was a division in the church at philippi there was an ego clash in the church at philippi and they were not living a life worthy of the gospel and so jesus and paul is quoting the life of jesus look at the example of jesus see how he humbled himself see how he did not have his own interests held high over others but he held the interests of others more than himself it was not for him he died he died for others selfless sacrifice involves selflessness my comfort my convenience my good time my well being my pleasure my priorities we let go of all of these and live a selfless life hallelujah sacrificially love selflessly not living out of selfish ambition not looking at our own interests but looking at the interests of others hallelujah then there is a transformation that happens that will begin to happen in the lives of people it will touch the hearts of people it will touch the lives of people it will impact their lives it will impact their lives they will see a difference when we relate with people here paul, uh, paul the apostle is writing about how they ought to relate with one another is the aspect of relationships with one another we need to be selfless and when we selflessly love and care for one another people really don't care how much you know until they know how much you care very often we can have a big round head with a lot of stuff put inside but if we have no sacrificial selfless love all our knowledge is useless all our experiences that we can brag about are useless all our past inheritance and heritages that we can pride ourselves in are useless if we are not living that life today many people talk big but do very less let's not just be big talkers but doers amen the word of god says don't just be listeners but doers no don't just be hearers of the word but be doers of the word so may god give us the grace to have this incarnational transformation we who have experienced an incarnational transformation in our lives we need to do the same do like jesus did be relational beings relate with one another build bridges as a relational god who came to have relationship with us 
and wanted us to be in relationship with him as we have fellowship with him we also need to bring reconciliation in the lives of other people with god so that they will also come into fellowship with that, with him and secondly we talked about sacrificial love a sacrifice involves suffering serving and selflessness amen this is how you find the incarnational transformation that jesus brought in the, into the world and you and i are called to do the same in our own context in our own lives in our workplace in our neighborhood in the lives that we will live in our, among our relatives among our friends everywhere would you bring jesus to people's lives in this season amen praise the lord after all the celebrations of after all the decorations and the christmas tree and the lights and the star after all the christmas carols singing and everything is done let's get to the bottom of it this is the ground reality everything else is very temporal these beautiful papers are worth probably 100 rupees these uh, decorations may cost another 200 rupees ultimately that's all is the worth of everything external a star may cost 80 rupees there's no glory in all of these but the glory is in the gospel of jesus the glory is in the transformed life the glory is in the way that you bring transformation in the lives of people around you hallelujah that is glorious that is eternal that is powerful that is why jesus was born hallelujah may we do that every day amen may we bring transformation in the lives of people